Well, good afternoon, everyone. Cynthia Tomain here with Interactive Brokers, and we are quite pleased this afternoon to have Tim Ward with us talking about framing price movement, your trade, your thinking. Now, before we do get started, though, I would like to introduce uh, Pete Momat with the CME Group, who's going to give us a brief overview about the products that will be discussed during today's event, and then we'll bring Tim on for the meat of today's presentation. So, Pete, if you can unmute your phone, I'm going to go ahead and pass you the ball, and let's get going here today. All right, well, Pete, I'm going to unmute the phone for you, so uh, hold on, you're now going live. Are you there, Pete? I am. Thank you so much, Cynthia. Sorry about the technical glitch, everyone. Uh, and thank you to everyone around the globe for joining us today. CME Group is pleased to be co-sponsoring this event with IB and extend a welcome to you for today's presentation, Framing Price Movement, Your Trade, Your Thinking with Tim Morsh. CME Group and IB have been working together to bring you professional educational webinars on futures for many years, and we encourage you to look in IB's webinar archives for past events from 2012 and 2013, as well as register to attend further monthly events. As trader and investor, Cynthia, can you forward the slide, one slide for me, please? Yeah, how, just help Are you forward. able to see that, Pete? I am, Cynthia, so sorry. As a trader, as a trader and, and investor, you look for opportunity in the markets and ways to capture that opportunity. Futures are an extremely flexible tool for expressing your market opinion and capturing trading opportunity. The CME Group Futures and Futures Options Markets trade electronically almost 24 hours a day, providing traders an opportunity to trade across market volatility any time of the day from anywhere in the world. CME Group represents a family of individual exchanges, including the Chicago Board of Trade, CME, NYMEX, COMEX, and the Kansas City Board of Trade Exchanges, with contracts covering all major asset classes, including FX, stock indexes, agricultural commodities, energy metals, and interest rates. The CME Group is regulated by the U.S. CFTC, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. As Tim discusses the importance today of patience and waiting for the right trade setup, he will be using the Aussie U.S. dollar pair. The CME offers futures on the Australian dollar in both a regular size contract with a notional value of 100,000 Australian dollars, as well as an e-micro contract with a notional value of 10,000 Australian dollars. CME offers futures on over 61 different currency pairs spanning 21 countries. The Interactive Brokers CME Group Futures Resource Center can be found at www.interactivebrokers.com backslash CME. Start your days with news, quotes, and charts on all actively traded CME products. Tim Morris has been a professional trader, author, educator, and mentor for more than 35 years. Besides trading his own capital, Tim is president of Blackthorn Capital, a private money management firm that works with several of the largest non-U.S. institutional portfolios. In the 1980s and 90s, he managed and taught other traders for institutions like Commodities Corp., J.P. Morgan, and Goldman Sachs. He remains one of the world's largest currency traders, routinely carrying positions of several billion U.S. dollars. Tim has taught hundreds of professional floor traders at the CBOT and CME to become successful off-floor electronic traders. He is a regular lecturer at some of the most prestigious graduate schools of business and finance in the United States, including MIT, Stanford, and the University of Chicago. He currently donates his time teaching basic technical analysis to fourth and fifth grade accelerated students at 59 elementary schools around the United States. He is a regular featured speaker at the popular Traders Expos held around the world, writes a weekly column for MSN and MoneyShow.com, and gives educational webcasts for most of the exchanges around the world. He is the author of several highly regarded books, Trading with Median Lines, and Mapping the Markets, featuring his own trading methods. His website's www.medianline.com and www.marketgeometry.com feature a great deal of free information regarding his trading methodology and are visited by thousands of traders from around the world on a regular basis. As always, thanks for making time in your schedule for us. Over to you, Tim. Thanks. All right, I got the unmute. 
Hi, Pete. How are you? It's good to, always good to talk to you. Cynthia, um, happy holidays, darling. Uh, always a pleasure oh. to be invited. Oh, it's wonderful to hear your voice. We know something one, or something excellent is about to unfold. We're going to do something a little bit different today, darling, um, because it's the holidays and those people are going to take a little bit of time off. I'm going to present this in a fashion that lets them uh, not only follow along, but as we accelerate toward the end, because we have so much information, I'm going to let them uh, go back and, uh, and do a little bit of homework. So I, I think that'll, that'll be enjoyable for them over the holidays. So. <laughs> Homework's always a good way to emphasize the point. <laughs> well, I hope so. Anyway, um, let's get started. We got we have lots to do today. Um, first of all, thank you all for taking time out of your busy out of your busy schedule. I know you guys. Yeah, I know you're getting some homework, David. It's okay. Um, taking time out of your busy schedule. I know you have lots to do during the day, especially as you get closer to the holidays. And um, that being said, you know, let, let's see if we can. Um, Get that gray matter between your ears working. Um, this is more conceptual today, but if you can wrap your hand, head around it, wrap your hands around it, um, it'll really help your trading. Uh, we've already done, uh, this is my company, Market Geometry, as well as Blackburn Capital. Blackburn Capital um, is the firm that I manage money under. Uh, it owns Market Geometry. Market Geometry is the teaching arm. Um, as Pete mentioned, um, with the help of Michael Dell, um, one of my partners, and I'm, I'm proud to be a friend, and he took over when Steve passed away, Steve Jobs. Um, we're managing uh, to teach fifth graders in 59 schools, and the next year we're going to do fifth graders and ninth and tenth graders. Uh, we're already up to 125,000 kids this year from 75,000 last year. Next year, his goal is to be close to a half a million students, so ought to be a good time. And I'm, I'm going to talk to Cynthia. Maybe we'll get her involved as well. Um, there's disclosure here, and it, it's easy. First, this is one person's experience. Your experience may, may differ, okay? Whatever you see, including anything from me, you should always keep in mind, you need to verify that it works for you, that it's true. Because, you know, what I'm doing, you may not be able to see. What I'm teaching might not work for you. Um, so even if I say it, please, 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 Go back and verify it, no matter who says it, because we're talking about money here. It's the most important thing there is. Past performance means nothing. It means nothing. What matters is what you can do going forward. There is no holy grail. I don't have it. If you came here looking for the holy grail, I'm sorry. Even at Christmas time, I don't have it. It doesn't exist. Hard work, education, practice, mastering yourself, that's the holy grail. Last. When markets get volatile, I know it looks like it's fun to trade because things are just going crazy. You need to reduce your risk, okay? Your orders may not be filled as placed. You may lose more than you wish. Of course, you could always make more, but somehow it never seems to work that way. So please be careful in volatile markets. So, and don't over leverage. That's enough of the rest of it. Uh, Cynthia's already gone through. So um, these seminars are dedicated to people, that's you guys, that come to take these le lectures, uh, trying to improve their skills. I'm honored that you take time out of your busy schedule to come hear my thoughts. Um, now, very important, this is a presentation in the same style that I use when I lecture at MIT and Stanford. In fact, I'm doing, uh, next week I'm doing virtual finals. How'd you like to be? in my graduate class at Stanford MIT. Ugh, four hours of virtual finals to me, not fun. Please be patient while the market, while the material unfolds. And at the university, this might be a three or four hour lecture. So please keep your comments related to this material and my methodology. I'm not gonna comment on any other educator's methods. Okay, that's for them, not for me. Please focus on my materials in my presentation today. Most of you are here to learn about my materials from this seminar. Please hold your questions until the presentation is over. I try not to look at them, but I'm, you know what, I'm not very good at not looking at the chat panel. I wish I, wish I was better at it, but I'm not. So do me a favor, just, just wait. We'll, we'll take all the questions you have um, at the end. We'll even go backwards in slides. We'll do whatever you need to do, but we need to have a nice, even flow. So let's go. This is about as close to truth in trading as you get. Price fluctuates. Means it, goes up, it goes down, 
Sometimes it goes sideways. You need to be patient. And as we said in the description before you signed up, patient for what? What is Tim always saying, let's be patient for? So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to study motion in 20-minute Aussie dollar. Let me see if I get my little cursor here. There we go. I can even draw, can't I, Cynthia? Yeah, let me get a pen. So I don't draw very well. If I got a very tight range, there's not much in the way of opportunity there. So we want to be selective. Our money is very important. And when you lose money, you have to make it back. So tight ranges, not that good. Then we have what we call range extension. And that kind of looks like this. I need to practice with the drawing tool, but it's very quick, it's very steep, it's very difficult to get in unless you want to chase price, and generally when you chase price, you get in down, down here somewhere and get shagged out, and then the market will make its move. What we want, though, is we want, if we in this type of area, we want to be patient, we want to see range extension. If we can't find a way in with a good stop, we'll sit out and watch the range extension, and then what we'll see is, this has actually opened up the, the range. This has opened up the range that's available to us, and we'll see that price actually will do something like this. It'll actually flower, and we'll get this broad, fast, nice, even movement here. This is what we want to look and trade for. So this is what the patience for is. If we can, if this coil is too small to trade, if this range extension, which has to happen, is too steep for us to get in, or we miss the extension. We need to be patient. That's okay, because eventually price is going to blossom or flower, and these give us lots of opportunities. And once it happens, it gives us lots of profit opportunities. So that's what we're going to look at today is how to be patient, what we're looking for, and how to take advantage of it. Okay? So this is 20-minute Aussie. I, I don't remember what we said in the presentation, in registration, whether we just said just, I think we just said Aussie. Um, I know originally, originally I was going to do Aussie in Canada, but this became such a project, we did say Aussie, thank you, um, that, you know, I had no ability at that point to do both. I'll, I'll be happy if we get this. So if you can take a look at Aussie here, this is 20-minute bars, and we've got one day, two days, two and a half days here. And we've got a very tight range. It's only 40 pips. So two and a half days, 40 pips. Now, you know, I won't take a trade unless the risk reward, meaning if I risk a dollar, I'm going to make three. My probable profit target is at least $3 away. It's a 20-minute chart. So if I have a 40-pip range and a 15-pip stop, it's just not possible. There's nothing for me to do here. Top to bottom. 40 pips, stop 15 pips, it's not going to happen. It's not big enough. So I have to be patient. This is contraction. Now we wait. Price is building up energy. It's too, Yeah, I know it's day and a half, two days. You don't have to sit there for every bar. That's where people get into trouble. Just look at it, draw your line, and wait. And say, you know what, I, I don't have anything to do. If you have to, or if you feel like you want to trade, look at some other currencies. Look at, look at the, something on the IMM excuse me, old, old language, at the CME, at the CBOT, which is the CME, et cetera. So, well, we can't use a 10-pip stop area because look at the average true range, Yuri. See it? It's 12 pips. We got to be bigger than the average true range or we can't use that stop loss. So we need at least a 15-pip stop loss, so it's not going to work. Scalping is losing money, boys and girls. But that's a, that's a topic for another day. So, Here's just about the time we're about to give up on this market. We get a pleasant surprise. After a tight range, I need to see range extension, and that's what I get. Now, you shouldn't be frustrated because it broke out of the range and you weren't long. That's life, okay? We just have to just relax and let it do its thing. So here's – we're going to zoom in a little bit. Here's our tight range. Oh, I need my ball, don't I? Let's see if I'm a bad boy. No. There we go. Here's our tight range. And what I did was 
I connected the high of this breakout bar. And you can see here we made a high, and then the next bar didn't follow through. So I connected the high of this breakout bar with the high of this bar. And I just copied it over to the exact price where we broke out of the top of the range. And you can see it caught the close. And this was a poor close after price broke out. I mean, I would expect that we would see significant follow-through. So at the moment, we've more than doubled the range. That's the good news. So we do have range extension. But I don't like the close. I don't exactly know what to do with it. This isn't a channel. Just slow down, guys. Just relax and pay attention. We're just looking at price. There's nothing to do here. So we watch and what happens? Well, price breaks out of one tight range. Now it's right back at another tight range. We're adults. What do we have to do? Well, we're patient. We're in another tight range. Price breaks out to the upside. That's great. Doesn't make much excursion to the upside. Then it plunges to the downside and goes into another range. Well, it's expanded from a tight range of less than 40 pips to the current high to low range of nearly 160 pips. That's a big difference. Now, since price has made new highs followed by new lows, we're currently looking at expanding pivots, which can be very dangerous. I needed price extension. Now I have it. But because of the expanding pivots, I don't really have or see any logic to the movement of price. I don't do things just to do things that needs logic. And at the moment, I don't have anything logical so I'm just going to observe. I'll find something. I'm patient. So, again, price broke out. And now we're back in a tight range. We break out to the top side, and we're back in the top range. Now we blow through. Price is back inside the original range, but our current low to high has widened from less than 40 to more than 120 pips. That's range extension. Price extended its range, and, again, we're at 160 pips, and now we're Ranging again, and we're, we're looking for logic, okay? We've had price extension, which we needed. We were in a very tight range. We've had price extension. I know we're in a range, but at some point, we're going to get either extension that we can trade or price is going to flower or blossom. And what we want to avoid is getting cut up in here, getting cut up in here when it doesn't make sense, getting cut up, getting long up here. We want to wait for... Something that makes sense, something that we can see, something we can trade. So price comes down, gets in a tight range. You can see it starts to break out. We double the range. That's right here. Then we make a slightly higher high, break back within the range. Now I connect these two higher highs. It's a frequency or a slope. That's what I'm looking for. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I don't know. It may not even be relevant, but I'm trying to put together pieces of logic that eventually, if I see them repeat, I can use. So price heads higher, but turns lower before reaching the center of the range, which was right here. We didn't reach the center. And then it makes a new low. And I've got some frequency sitting right here. So we're, we're building a case. Think of it that way. It's like forensic science. All right. You can see us. Head lower, we break out through the low, continue to make new lows. Now, take a look. Price makes a new low, wide range bar, but closes on its high. Most interesting bar on the way down for me so far. So I take this frequency and I copy it down here. I don't know what it's going to do yet. But that's what this dotted line is, just to remind me. I copied this frequency, this slope, down here. And let's see if it has any use at all. Well, here's what happens. Price breaks back into the range, leaves multiple tops, comes down, tests the prior low to the tick twice, leaves double bottoms, heads back up, and now we're right back at the prior highs. But this frequency that we grabbed all the way, this little bit of frequency from over here, is a wonderful, a perfect center line. Look at the action that it cuts through. It grabs all the beautiful highs, cuts through this 
see these multiple tops up here, same frequency, all the way down. It's a beautiful center line. It bisects the current range perfectly. So here's our question. As we get up to the top of this range and our center line is working, is this an important high? Because that's what we're going to need to mark out at one point. We're going to have to mark out an alternating pivot, either an important high or an important low. And at the moment, we're still trying to grab the logic to say we've got an important high or an important low. All right. You can see price sold off nicely after I asked the question, is this important high? And I always try and mark my third pivot or my C pivot within five bars. So here we're one, two, three, this is the fourth bar, wide range bar closing below its half. And so I mark in a down sloping median line. You can see, vaguely see the dotted line here. That was our original frequency from up here. So this, if you take a look at this median line, it's much broader and wider than if we had traded, for example, up in this area or even up in here. And this is what we're talking about with extension followed by flowering. It gives us wider ranges, bigger opportunities. Generally, it also means that we're going to see more bars that come into the strike zone area. These are 20-minute bars. All right. So we come down very fast. Price did not extend while making this range, but if this is an important high, ML3 right here, the length of the range coming after the vertical range extension will give us a wider median line set, which is, so we're talking about is this BC section will give us a wider median line set. So even if we don't trade here, again, ask questions afterwards, okay? Even if we don't trade here, each one of these sections have given us wider and wider and wider opportunities, which means more money. So I grab this eye, and here's our pullback, and this eye, and mark it as frequency. And somebody asked, is this in hindsight? These are my actual trading charts. And I never show anything at IB or anywhere, actually I only speak at IB or, or at market geometry, I only show actual trades. I know what other people do, but that's what I do. Now, I just grabbed this high, which is ML3, and this little load here, we don't know if this is important, and this small pullback, which also happens to be very near this shelf, and I did a modified shift, which means down 50%, over 50% of a little median line. And you can see the frequency that I grab, which is marked right here, and the frequency of this small modified shift, they're about the same. So I like the frequency of this upper parallel because it matches this frequency of these two highs. So a smaller modified shift median line carries the same frequency as the slope line I added. And when slopes repeat, it's called crystalline in nature. It's a crystalline structure. Crystalline structures repeat. Okay. Price swings back up. I'm considering a short position at the frequency line and where these multiple tops come together. So if price swings over here up to the frequency line and these multiple tops, I'm considering a position. My stop would be 20 pips higher, so it would be right here. It would be above the shelf. And what was support became resistance. Here's my problem. I know what my stop loss is going to be. I know what my potential entry, enter, enter, excuse me, my potential en entry would be. I mean, I get it. This is my potential en entry. The question is, what's the downside look like? I don't have much of a feeling for how much this is going to open up or flower, because at the moment we're contracting. So I'm a little bit worried. Before I could take this trade, I have to be able to match the stop, the entry and the downside movement to calculate risk-reward. I'm not sure. So let's see. I watch it, and I thought about a short position, but I'm, I'm just not sure. I mean, I could think about the red median line. I could think about 
doubling the range. There's lots of things I could have considered. But in this case, you know, somebody asked me if I if these are the hindsight. If this is hindsight, I just show you to say, why? Look how smart I am. In, in truth, I looked at this and I I didn't like my projection of the downside targets. So I didn't take the trade. Well, how do you feel when this happens? Everybody feels the same. You feel left behind at the train station, right? It's okay. There'll be other trades. Let's see what happens. Let's see if this would have worked. If it would have worked, at least we know our logic is intact. And as I said, these wider median lines are going to continue to give us wider and wider opportunities, which means larger and larger profit potential. So let's look. Price has worked its way lower from 96.25 to 94.55 without ever breaking back above the prior highs marked in red. So each time we left a shelf, we've never broken back above it. These are swing highs. And we've never held on any of the blue lines, which are swing lows. They've gotten broken every single time, period. Every time I mark them, they get broken. So that's literally lower highs and lower lows. That's as literal and as figurative as you can be. Note that price has never traded low enough, however, and fast enough to test this red downsloping median line. And Again, my target would have been either this downsloping median line or the lower parallel. And even though we've gone a long distance, we've never even approached the median line. Could I have trailed stops? Sure. But something here bothered me about, and, and there's lots of money on the table here, don't get me wrong. Something here, the reason I didn't enter the trade, bothered me because I couldn't, I, I didn't see, I didn't feel that this was the right profit target. This was the right profit target. Doubling this range was the right profit target. There's a trade in there. It just didn't work for me. On a whim, I mark a new upsloping magenta frequency line. Actually, it's downsloping right here. Using the flows of six of the last seven bars. See it? One, two, three, four, five. Well, maybe it's five. But I mark this magenta downsloping line. How am I going to use it? I'm not sure yet. Price has, again, expanded its range. So even though I don't have a trade, what do I have? I've got larger and larger opportunities coming up. All right. This red median line has still not been tested. Here's the downside frequency we drew in. Price has now worked its way lower from 96.25 to 94.55 without ever breaking back above prior highs. Oops, until now. This pattern of precise and detailed lower highs and lower lows has now been broken. This is logic. Simple, straight truth. We know one thing. Highs have never been taken out. Suddenly they have been taken out. A low has held, a high has been broken. Note that price has still never traded low enough or fast enough to test the red downsloping median line. And it is currently trading above the long downsloping upper parallel to this median line, which generally is a sign of strength. All right. So could have gotten short here with a stop here. No idea about a profit target. Was there a lot of downside excursion? Yes. Did I take the trade? Nope, I didn't. It's okay. Would this, would this be considered a change in behavior? I'd have to say it's certainly a change in the logical pattern. So on another day, I might have been better in tune with this market and taken the trade. It's certainly an opportunity I normally take advantage of. If I'd risked 20 pips, I could have made 77 pips, which would have yielded 3.85 to 1. It's not a huge profit. But there was money on the table, and I could have trailed the stop, but did not. Potential stop profit, if I trailed the stop, would have been above here by seven pips, 94.97, and I would have been profit stopped out. And, of course, now we're above the upper parallel. That's how the trade would have looked. I did not take this trade. All right, let's look. Now we're going to zoom in. I always like that when I do that. 
So I've got a couple of things going on. I've got this lower frequency downsloping. Don't know if I'll ever use it. You can see price came up, broke through the upper parallel, tested from the downside. Andrews calls this crawling. Price will crawl along uh, any of the median lines or its parallels and then make a move. We crawled and crawled and crawled. We came up. We could not make a new high. That's a major failure. So I connect the high of the move to the top of the major failure. And now we break and close below the lowest low. So I've got this frequency in, in rows. I guess that's the color. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I think this is probably a significant high now that we've made a new low. So this might be MLA or the first in alternating pivots. I've got this down sloping frequency over here. I don't know if I'm ever going to use it. And I've got this huge wide range bar that closes near its low. The rally that broke above the red down sloping up MLH ran out of energy rather quickly and then ended with a huge wide range bar that closed on its lows. And you know, if you don't catch this, it's not easy to catch. It's not logical for this to happen. Don't don't feel bad. I mean, it's it's an illogical, it's probably news. So if you're watching your screen and the market moves 50, 60, 70 pips, you know, don't spend any emotional energy saying, oh, my God, how could I miss that? Look at that move. That's the trade I should have had. Or go chase it, which is even worse. Instead, wait for the logic to line up. So we come down, we make a new low. Now, it's easy to see in prior lows that stops were washed to the downside as price broke below the prior low. As we came down here, anybody that was long that held on through this fall had their stop right under this low, and you could see what happened. The smart large buyers stepped out of the way, let the market plunge, and stepped back in and bought. And when price gets back up here, the people that were long, that got washed out, realize what's going on, and they start to chase the market. The whales are the people doing the washing. They pick up their position when everybody else is panicking. And they're more than happy to buy more if it comes back. So you can see it's almost like a pendulum swing. We swing up, we come down and run the stops. Now we're swinging back up. Now remember this frequency over here? We got this down sloping frequency over here. I just connect it up over here. Price runs out of energy right at this frequency. I connected it, now I have extended it. And price ran right out of energy at this rose colored frequency to the tick. So now I connect this frequency right where price ran out of energy. So these frequency, these little bitty frequency bars can be, if you practice them, can be very deadly. You can use median lines, we'll see. We're gonna be using median lines as well and they're you know, dead easy to draw. But if you can see the frequency, they're really very, very powerful. All right, so let's look. We've got a frequency over here. We've got our frequency over here. We've got our rose frequency going on. This is our significant low. This is our significant high. So we've got one pivot, a second pivot. Now we've got to find an alternating pivot. So it's got to be a high, a low. We're looking for sellers. We're looking for a C pivot or a third pivot. So we get this nice rally out here. Wide range bar, closes it up to third, but no follow through at all. And remember, I always mark my third pivot. I'm gonna answer questions at the end, guys. I always mark my third pivot within five bars. The key here is no follow through to the downside. And I leave, double, look, you can see double bottoms, and we bust through. So I mark the C. If we take out this high, I can always move the C but I'm always gonna mark it within five bars. Why? Because if it's a useful median line, I wanna trade up in here. I don't wanna trade down here. I wanna trade as close to the bone as possible, so to speak. Ah, what the, what did we do there, Cynthia? Oh, oh wrong uh -huh. page, Cynthia. Never mind. I got it. <laughs> Scared myself. <laughs> and me too. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> All right. 
Sorry about that. All right, so once again, this frequency that we use from all, all the way over here, within five bars, I think this is C. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just going to take this frequency and move it over here. I'm also going to put in a median line from A and B and C. I think it's significant. But I notice right away price is falling faster than the slope of the red median line set. So I copy over the magenta frequency line because its slope is faster than the red upper parallel. I want to see if it interacts with price. All right. Let's just take a look. Everybody just, just take a moment. Take a breath. Yeah, that, is it, is it, is it, is it I cannot teach and answer questions at the same time, okay? I'll answer questions at the end. I'm not trying to be rude. I just can't do both because I'll have no, uh, what's their word? I'll just be out of step. Just, just relax, and I'll, I'll, I'll be glad to come back to this slide and answer your question. So everybody just take, take a breath, step back, take a look at the chart in front of you. This is a bread, um, I can, I don't know. Let me see if I can shut the chat off, hang on. I can, I did. All right, sorry, I can't see what you're saying now. My apologies. All right, so now we've pulled back nicely. And I love, this is one of my favorite patterns. I love horizontal lines that slide into these downsloping vertical lines. So I take a look. If price comes back up, you can see we're making lower lows, and we've got flat tops. If price comes back up to test my frequency line, which has worked three times now, I'm willing to get short there with a stop above my C pivot, which would be a swing high. And you can see it's 17 pips. My range in Aussie is always 15 pips as a minimum, 30 pips as a maximum. This is 17. So it's a relatively small one. I need at least three to one risk reward. If you take a look, if I get if I get short at 14, 95, 14, with a stop at 31, and my minute, my first problem is at this median line, and that's going to give me more than three to one. And remember, we have the rose frequency line. I can project that down here as well off of the first pullback. So that would be my alternate profit, 94.48. Gives me an extra 12 pips. It's not much, but everything helps. Let's see how it unfolds. I do get, comes back up, I do get short. Make sure my stop's in. I check my platform, make sure that I'm working my stop. And I finally felt oriented enough to execute a trade. I get short at 95.14 using the magenta frequency line with a stop loss at 95.31. Now I've had two, I have two downside potential profits, the first at the median line and the second at the rose frequency line. Either profit target would have worked, but I chose to place my profit order at the median line. Why? Because Andrews proved when he invented median lines, and we've gone over it over and over, you know, with all kinds of computer work, at Goldman Sachs, at Commodities Corporation, there's been three doctorate dissertations written on this, as well as all my work that's been written. When price moves from the upper parallel and is headed toward the median line, it'll make it 80% of the time. If it's moving from the median line to the up, upper parallel, it'll make it 80% of the time. So this is certainly a viable profit target, but I know it's going here 80% of the time. I'll just take my money at the 80% profit target. It's only 12 pips anyway. If you want, the frequency certainly has been working. If you want a whole lot for the frequency, you can see it worked fine. It's a matter of style. Now, before I can stock another trade, so I've rolled forward now about three and a half stops. That means that I can trade more than three times and still be trading with the market's money. I'm trading free. All the weight's off your shoulder when you trade like this. Before I can stock another trade, I need price extension because we're back into a range. Or I need price to blossom or flower, which is kind of a big broadening fat move. 
Either one will be fine with me. So I'm watching, and I see that we're in this range. And I'm orienting myself. We observe, we orient, we make decisions, then we execute. All right? So we take the action. UDA, it's from the military. All right, so now I take a look, and I look at the median line, and I see, you know, price has tested this lower parallel now a number of times. But once, it overshot quite a bit. So I measure that. I just connect it to the top. And then I take a line, the same slope as the upper parallel or the median line, and project it out. And you can see price respected that sliding parallel perfectly. So I have confidence now. Not only is this median line working, but even when it's floppy on the downside of the upside, the frequency is working perfectly in this median line. So we'll see how we can use this. Price comes down. This is where we got short. We took our profit. Now we're looking for new alternating pivots. Price trades a little lower, but then resumes trading sideways until the end of Friday. Here's the end of Friday right here. A large gap higher open on Sunday night makes the choice of the third. In other words, I wasn't sure this is an obvious low. This is an obvious high. In fact, I made money off of this high. Then we had a nice swing back. But I wasn't sure about this pivot, and it was middle of Friday. But when we gap open on Sunday, it's obvious that this is an important low. And note that price also missed retesting the median line, which is a sign of strength. So I draw in a new green upsloping median line, which is a sign of strength, upsloping. First alternating pivot, second alternating pivot, third alternating pivot, it's upsloping. Bisect it, draw in the median line. Most charting packages will do it automatically for you. The key for me was the gap on Sunday night. We were range trading, broke out. Now, with gaps, it's not so much the gap that's important. The question I always get asked is, okay, price filled the gap, so doesn't that mean it doesn't matter? It's not that the gap stays open or closed. The gap shows intention. The key is whether or not there's any follow through. Now, if we gap open higher, and then take out the lows, that's important. If we gap open higher, don't take out the lows, and then take out the highs, that's important. If we just range trade, the gap is fairly meaningless. So it's what, the, what happens from the gap that makes this important. Of course, it helps me mark this as an alternate pivot, but then I need follow through on one side or the other. I do need a failure, or I need follow through to the upside. So the signs of strength are beginning to add up. Could price be about to blossom to the upside? So when price zooms the median line, see this? 80% of the time when it zooms through with one bar, it will come back and retest. When it doesn't, that's a sign of strength. No retest here is a major sign of strength. Not making it to the median line is a major sign of strength. We draw in our median line, nice upsloper, Looks good. You can even look at the handle and see how it cuts through. All the touches are nice. It cuts through this action with a good slope. Look at the double taps here on the handle. It's a very nice looking mini line. We're not close to trading here yet because we're up in this area, but so far so good. So now price, let me take a drink one second. And don't worry, that's green tea I can drink and drive. Price is uh, gapped, moved up, almost gets to the median line. And now we go into, if you turn your head to the left, about 20 degrees. Everybody turn your head to the left. I'll wait. Now you can see this is a range, but it's sloped. But you should treat it as any other range. Okay, I call it a rolling chop because people that do try to trade this, they buy the breakouts and they get get stopped out, then they get short, then they buy, get stopped out, then they buy the breakout over and over. But this is a range, and you have to be careful with these. So price finally does test the median line. 
still respects the bottom end of this coil, goes back up, is unable to test the median line, is unable to test the median line, comes back up, leaves double tops, and is unable to touch the median line. So it appears to take, set to take off to the upside, but then finds tremendous resistance at the median line where Andrews taught us that price will often run out of directional energy. When price reverses to the downside, it seems clear it's going to test the lower parallel. Price has tested the median line. If it doesn't break through to the upside with 80% probability, it will test the downside. Very simple. We know these. They're statistical facts. So price is headed toward this lower parallel. So this lower parallel has not been tested. I'm going to turn chat on for a second if I can figure out how to do it. Uh, I guess I'm not that I'm not that smart. I'll just let you do it later. Oh, no, wait a second. There we go. Here's my question for all of you. Now, now, since everybody wants to talk, let me ask you a question. Then I'll turn it back off. This lower parallel has not been tested. Do you trust that the whole price from falling further? It's a yes or a no. It's not a not yet. I got one yes, two yeses. I'm going to let you have a not sure. That George, that's an intelligent one. I'm going to, I'll let you go. And I got a big no. Okay. All right. So, again, I'm going to – Don says it's time to get in. All right. I'm going to turn shade off again so I can get a rhythm going. And we'll see what we get going. All right, so here we go. Do we trust this lower parallel to hold? And it's a, good, it's a good question. This is a stylistic thing. Do you want to trade the first time it tests this median line? Or do you want to see confirmation? Do you want to see what it does? Let's see what happens. Price comes down. And in a median line this wide, that is a test. In fact, it's two tests. And I know you can't see it, but this second bar closes all the way up here. So it tests it, and the second bar gives us great separation. And now it moves to the upside nicely. But now, are you comfortable buying a retest of this lower parallel? Is this median line, here, I'll open chat again. Is this, is this median line getting stale? Do you trust it, first of all? It's a yes or a no. I'll even take a, you never know. Well, then you can't trade. Okay, how about is it getting stale? Well, you, know, you don't ever have to trade. Is it getting, getting stale? Okay, do you think there's a stop available? Okay, so everybody's dialed in. We got everybody playing, everybody's dialed in. I'm gonna turn the chat off again so I can do my thing. Let's take a look. So, we tested here with great separation. We moved up. Now we don't know that we're gonna get anything. You never know, but stop. The question is, do you consider this comfortable for a stop. One thing I might point out is this area coincides really with right where we zoomed the median line originally, the downsloping median line. Let's see. If you're worried about the larger, now I didn't have anybody that said they were particularly worried. I had some people that said they didn't want to trade it. But if you're worried about the larger median line being stale, quote unquote, since so much time has passed from the first alternating pivot form down here, you can easily check for frequency again by drawing a smaller median line using the original third alternating pivot right here as the new A pivot. I added both a traditional median line, which is in gray and upsloping, and a modified shift median line, which is the same as the gray, except that's up 50% and over 50%. So if you ever wanted to see a modified shift and a traditional together, that's they're both on the same pivots. A modified shift is up 50% over 50%. Now you can choose to use either. 
I personally like that the modified shift confirms the dotted line is our original big green median line. I personally like that the modified shift confirms the original frequency, but that's because price is traded between the lower parallel and the median line. And remember, two median lines with equal, slope, with equal slopes do not mean that you should be more confident. They, they're not additive. Each of the two carries its own probable path of price. So if you were worried about it being stale, then you can trade off the magenta median line. That's fine. It does happen to have the basically the same slope, but it's not additive in nature. If you like the traditional median line, you can trade off the gray. It's your choice. It's a matter of style. I like the modified shift, but there's nothing wrong with trading off the traditional. And remember, here's how I chose it. The MLB to MLC swing is the largest swing available. Take a look. Here's all the swings since. It's the largest swing since the original, uh, since this original third all steady pivot was formed. And that's why I used it for the BC in this A, B, C alternate pivot formula that gave me either the gray traditional or the pink modified shift. So now I've got something to work with. So here we go. I'm drawing this in. These aren't real. The maximum excursion from the lower parallel down here, which is pink, to the higher parallel is at least 65 pips. I actually believe it's hard to tell pixelation, but I actually believe it's 67, but let's say 65 pips. So with a 15 pip stop loss, it is more than possible to achieve a three to one risk reward from bottom to top. And remember, because it is sloped, if time goes on, you'll get more than 65 pips. Now, I may be willing to trade this opportunity, I may, but only with some qualifications. First, using a 15 pip stop loss, is there enough available room for a three to one risk reward ratio? And second, I would only get long on a test and retest. In other words, it has to test like this bar did and close with some separation. And then I would put in a buy order. I wouldn't buy the first test I would want it to touch the pink magenta, or the magenta line first and close with separation. Then I would put in a buy order. And my target would be the upper parallel. So those are my conditions. 15 pip stop loss. I have to be able to be underneath this corner. That works. And, but it only works if I test relatively soon. For example, if we didn't test till all the way over here, a 15 pip stop is not gonna work. So I've got, the, the clock is ticking, so to speak. And these bars have not happened yet, I just drew these in. I'm playing this in my mind. What would I do? Well, if it came down, I needed to test, close the separation, then I'd put in a buy order. Now I'm gonna open chat again. What, does that work for you guys? So we're not, we're not trying to do anything special here or anything interesting. Very, very basic trading here today. All right. So I'm going to close a lot. Let me keep going. So let's see what we get. You know what my conditions are. Let's see if we can meet them. So here we come down and we test and close with nice separation. Look at the test of even the green and the nice separation above. So that's good. I can still use my 15 pip stop loss. That's good. So now I put in a blue, which means I put in a limit buy order on my IB platform. And now I can actually honestly say, since the Graybeards, my brokers, clear through IB, I can actually say I put it in on my IB platform. We're going to buy at the magenta line, 15 pip stop, logical profit target, the upper parallel. Now this frame, we're calling this framing a trade, this frame calls for getting in and getting out without trailing profit stops. In other words, this is tight. And if I put a profit, a trailing profit stop here, I'm only gonna make $100 or so and my risk reward is just gonna fall apart. And if I do that very often, I'm not gonna roll forward stops. So I'm looking to go from my, what Andy and Drew, my first, some of my first students and very, very good professional traders called Blue to Blue. 
So I'm looking to go from this area of the magenta line all the way up to this area of the magenta line. And if we break the median line with 80% probability, we should get there. Of course, I have to get filled first. So price tests the lower parallels and closes five-fifths from its low. So that's good. The first condition has been met, a successful test and a close of separation. Now my limit buy order needs to be filled. All my orders are marked. I'm going to buy at 94.66. My stop's at 51. My profit target, I just measured straight up and went across 95.32. Okay? You can do the math if you want to know the risk reward, but it's four something. I'm sure it's marked. Okay. Once price retests the lower parallels, filling my limit buy order at 94.66, the bar closes with great separation. Look at this nice. I just love getting along and seeing these types of closes. The bar, is, bar closes with great separation, 14 pips above my buy order. So I'm immediately 15, 14 pips in the money. The market has offered me this opportunity. So it gave me an opportunity. I did get long. And now at the moment, I've got 14 pips in this trade. Now it's my job to execute my orders as I plan them when framing the trade. In other words, I don't want to start to just, you know, run freestyle here and say, yeah, you know what, let me take profit here. Or let me just put in a stop profit here. We already talked about this. My plan is to go from magenta to magenta and nothing else. I might move to break even if I get enough profit in this trade so that it's not a loser. But other than that, what I want out of this trade, because it's a simple trade, is I want to go from magenta to upper magenta, nothing else. If my profit target is hit with the very next bar, if no time goes on, I will achieve a risk reward of 4.4 to 1. So that's great. I don't take anything less than 3 to 1. 4.4 would be wonderful. All right. One, two, three, four bars after I enter. Things are going better than anticipated. After testing the lower parallel, price has gone straight up. After the original test, there was only a one-bar opportunity to get long. So if my orders weren't in, I would not have been filled, period. Price has now made five higher highs and five higher lows. The current bar closed 45 pips above my entry, which works out to be a three-to-one risk-reward ratio already. There are no swings to hide my orders when I take a look. There's nothing but upward movement. Just, I mean, relative to these bars, they look like wide-range bars. Why do we have to use 15 bit stops? I'm going to go back and answer that because I know somebody questioned it earlier. They wanted to use 10. Because look at my average true range. 34 period is 13. 200 period is 12. So I've got to be bigger than my average true range. Otherwise, I'm going to get knocked out by the noise. And in fact, the range is picking up. The current bar closed 45 pips. There are no swings to hide any orders behind, but I cannot let this position turn into a loss now. Now that it's a three to one, this can't be a loser. That'd be a sin. So I go to break even. I'm long at 94.66. I cancel my stop loss and turn it into a break even stop loss. And I also adjust the level of my profit target. Take a look. This was my profit target, but because we're at upsloping lines and time has gone forward, I measure straight up and I move my profit target up by some a few pips. Every pip counts. Every, every pip here is 10 bucks, guys, on 100,000. All right. Six bars after my long entry, my profit target at 95.35 was hit. This was a tightly framed trade. I wanted to buy a quick retest to the lower parallel and exit the long position at a test of the median line. Pardon me, at a test of the upper parallel. Price may continue higher. Could just keep right on going. That's okay with me. This was my plan. This is the slice that I wanted to take out of the market. I wanted to rip out from the lower magenta to the upper magenta, and I wanted to get out clean and walk away. I don't want to trail anything. I don't care if it keeps going. You can see it's vertical. There's no place for me to hide a stop. So I want my money. Thank you. Price may continue higher, but my frame for this trade was to take out roughly 65 pips and get out with a nice, quick profit. And you can see I risked 15 pips and made 69 pips for an actual 4.6 to 1 risk reward ratio. I'll do that any day of the week. Plus, it's such a quick trade. Six bars is uh, 
nice nice two hour two hour profit, six hundred ninety bucks per hundred thousand. All right, let's see what happens afterwards. That actually ended up being the high. Andrew says price will turn that. And remember, this is the green median line. There's also the green upper parallel. Price, when it tests a median line or an upper parallel, it will either accelerate, which we call zooming, or stop and reverse. There's a small percentage of the time, about 14%, that it consolidates. But we didn't even get that. We just got a complete reversal. So price reversed. This is another reason why I'm willing to always take my profits even though I might have a uh, frequency at slightly higher, at 80% pro probability, I'm more than willing to take my money, get out of the way, and let price do what it's going to do. So price rallied hard for six bars, tested the median line again where I exited, and 15 bars later, price is back down, about to test the lower parallel again. My trade was surgical, both in framing it and executing. So I planned the trade. I put the orders in. I let the market do what it was supposed to do. All I had to do was move my stop to break even and move my profit target up once, done. That's my job as a trader. Now that price is back near the lower parallel, I'm not particularly interested in a long position. I need price to expand again, and I'm willing to wait for price to buy. So I'm going to open up chance. How about you guys? You guys want to get long now? So I've got some, a couple no's, a lot of yeses. Whisper trade based on account size, and account size typically is what is used. We talk about that afterwards, guys. Time for a break. Okay. So we've got we've got a lot of people that would like just to limit buy with a stop underneath. You know, a lot of, a lot of people say it's, hey, it's time for a break. Let's see what happens. Thomas Tomas just wants to trade. Okay, let's see what we get. I, you know, I know a couple of you personally, and, and you're you're in. You're just you're in it to win it. All right, let's see what we get. So we come down, and we're at this area. As I pull back and clean up my chart in my mind, so I take a break. I literally. Walk. This is what I do. If I've been in front of my screen for a couple hours, I actually make myself get up. I, li I trade something called a bad cave. It's actually built inside of a mountain. My house is, I live on a mountain, and I'm inside the granite mountain. I leave the bad cave. You have to go about 30 yards down, the, down this nice little corridor to get into the house, walk into the house, get some tea, whatever, maybe get, generally take a snack, um, you know, talk to my wife if, if she's home. If I have to go outside, do something to refresh, refresh your focus, make sure you're awake. Good 5, 10, 15 minutes or longer. Come back. Take a look and see what's going on. I might, might even just be done for the day. So as I pull back and clean up my chart and my mind, I see this brown frequency line. I, collect, I just connect these lows. One, two, three, four lows. I don't know if it's going to be meaningful. It's only an observation as I reorient myself. Remember, I'm coming back in and now I'm looking at this. And, you know, this is the sliding parallel. This is where it came, you know, swung down. I got long in here, took my money and ran. Now it's running back down. Didn't quite make the lower parallel of the green, and now it's working its way higher. So those of you who wanted to get long at the moment, it looks pretty good. I've got this brown frequency line. I don't know what it means. I sat this one out. If you jumped in, we'll see what happens. Here's the brown frequency line. Here's what we we're talking about. Those of you who are talking about getting along, we made it about halfway up, maybe a little less, left double tops, turned down, tested the median line. I marked the area where I took profit as my first alternating pivot, median line A. I marked the bottom of this frequency line as median line B. Now I need to find sellers. So take a look. Lows, highs, highs getting taken out. Lows, highs, highs getting taken out. Now take a look. 
We close on our high. We make no upside progress. And now we break. This high became a low when we got up here. Was resistance became support. Now we break through to the downside. So, again, we talked about this earlier. Not holding. Draw on a median line. And we've got our down sloping median line. Now we come up and we see a swing higher. So this week we would call this, we're still within this green median line. We would call this a pendulum pullback. Here we are pulling back. And in our breakfast session, we teach six o'clock in the morning. That's breakfast with the master. We teach midday, which is midday mentoring. And then we also teach evening, which is portfolio trading. In our breakfast session today, we talked specifically about this trade, which is the pendulum pullback. So it should be your, if you're a median line trader, this is your bread and butter trade. How many people are interested in this area? Let me open up chat. Hey, Matt Cube, how are you? So, hi, Petra, just saw you. All right, so is anybody not like it? Because if George doesn't, if George doesn't like it, okay. Anybody else? Okay, I guess some people are saying there are higher highs. Okay, this is what makes a market. Okay, I want you to get engaged. I want you to look at it. Is that media line C not too quick consumption? I always do it within five bars. Tomas, it's done the same stair step three times. Okay. So but let's see. I'm going to shut it off, uh, chat off again for a minute, but let's see. Uh, let's watch. I'm willing, as we come up here, I put in the frequency line. Let me go back. Remember this frequency line? I'm just going to copy it right here. Because price is, I don't know what price is going to do. I'm not in a hurry to trade, but I'm not, I'm not sure that we're not about to turn. And here's what we get. We get multiple, I copy the frequency line from here to here. We get multiple tops, then we turn lower. So we leave a lower high for the first time. So those of you that are saying three stair steps higher and it looks like I could repeat, okay. But now we take out the low and we leave a lower high. I put the frequency in. And even though I've got the median line, my frequency line is working pretty good. They tested up here, triple tops. Now it's been tested. We pull back, and we're testing it again. And I get short on this second bar. So we tested it. There was a bar between. I get short right here at 95.34. Simple 15 pip stop. And as I said, those people that were in breakfast with master this morning, this is your bread and butter setup, which is a pendulum pullback. So let's see. Anybody like this trade? Don't like this trade? I don't like the upflow. Okay. Hey, Pat and BJ, how are you doing? Okay. Let's see. Let's see what it does. It looks good. I mean, you never know what the market's going to give you. Let's see what we get out of it. So price swings up. This is our bread and butter trade. This. Pendulum and pullback. This is the easiest one to see if you practice with media lines. And get short, stutter step, try to get back up to the entry area and fail, and then have a nice, huge, wide range bar lower. Now, if you extend the frequency line, we're at the frequency line, and we're at the median line of this red down sloping median line set now price has plunged lower it's currently testing my frequency line this is where it gets interesting we have played this game of tight range extension tight range extension tight range extension over and over again but one thing we haven't done yet is blossomed with a big fat move now I've got a lot of money in this and I can put a profit stop in. I, even though this is a nice profit, I can see this blossoming or opening up 
because we've had so much range extension coil, range extension coil, range extension coil. Remember what I drew at the beginning. I can see it flowering or opening up from here. I mean, I'm going to open chat. Tell me if you think I'm completely out of my mind. The long frequency line is drawn from right here. I connect these four bottoms. I just connect it here. You can see it's the same, and then extended it out. Hold on for more. What, what else do you guys think? So these are action reaction lines. That's exactly right. Anybody say, well, yes, we'll trail stops. Anybody say just take the money? Break even is fine. Sure. Still an uptrend? Okay. Well, Greg, you don't have, well, do you want to be long, Greg? I'll put you long right here. I got some, I got somebody says take the money. Okay. Take profit and wait for a pullback. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. Hey, it's a nice profit. You know, it's four to one. Michael says, I would take it looking left. Okay. I, you know what? Nothing wrong with that look. He's taking a look here at this low, coming over and looking at this low. He's also got the median line going for him. He's also got the frequency. A lot of reasons to think about taking profit. I feel this thing is going to blossom. I could be wrong. So we'll see what happens. Uh, and more, how about a warning line? This is a good one. How about a warning line from this is the median line. This is the lower parallel. We'll measure this out. And how about a, media, a, a warning line? That's another good idea. Very good. I like that. All right, let's see what we get. Somebody says price will go to the other median line, meaning the lower parallel. Here's what happens. And what I want you to do, since you guys can all do this, because it is 20-minute Aussie, everybody's 20-minute chart will look the same. You can go back and verify this yourself. You can go back and draw these frequency lines. You can go back and draw the median lines. You can, you'll get the charts um, or all the all the uh, slides at the end of when you leave, okay? Go back, and this is your holiday homework. Rather than have me do this bar by bar by bar, I want you to go ahead and take it apart, put it back together on your own charting. I'll explain it. It is an action reaction set. I'll explain it, but then I want you guys to put it, take it apart and put it back together. That's the best way to learn, okay? So here's what happens. I've got the frequency up here. I get short at the frequency. I come down and test the frequency. I'm at break even. Okay? The key to this, if you want to trade like this, is that you can't move too close. You're, you can't put your stop loss too close. In other words, you can't put your stop loss right here. And you can't even put your stop loss, here's the bottom of the range. If you put your stop loss right at the bottom of the range, you would have got nicked by two ticks. So maybe you're 15 pips above here, or maybe you're at break even. I stayed at break even, and I didn't move until this low got taken out significantly. And then I started to trail and trail and trail and trail. Now, what was a logical profit for me? Well. The frequency got me in. Here's the center of the frequency. What made sense to me is the frequency brought me to the dance. I'm going to use the frequency to get myself out. So watch. I'll just take the frequency here, which I copied to the top. I'll measure the distance between the frequency and the top. Copy it here. That'll give me the low. Extend the frequency again. So now that in a certain sense, if you turn your head to the right, everybody turn your head to the right now a little bit. All I'm doing is doubling the range. It's just a sloped range. And this is an action-reaction set, okay? And it gives me my downside projection. And my pro I take my profit at 93.57. So let's do the post-mortem. Finally, price blossomed. I risked 15 pips to make 177 pips. That's a realized risk-reward ratio of 12 to 1. It's pretty good. I made several smaller trades before this one, and there were many more I could have made. But patience is the key when price is stuck in ranges or when price plunges or shoots up before you can get on board. Don't chase price, guys. Besides patience, the two keys to this trade were seeing price, that seeing the price was ripe for blossoming. We've had so many energy extensions and then so many contractions and then extension and contractions. At some point, price had to blossom. So I was willing to put money on the table 
by leaving my position on and going to break even or a small profit stop to try and capture this double the sloped range. So if I see the price is right for blossoming, that means not taking profits too soon and also keeping the stop profit orders two swings back. So by two swings back, that means I'm not here, I'm still at break even. Then when we take out this low, my stop's not here, it's now here. When it takes out this low, now it can go to here. When it takes out this low, now it can go, et cetera. So I'm gonna keep it two swings back all the way and I'll manage it until we get down to my profit target. It's just that simple. So a 50 plus pip rally doesn't take you out. That's the key right before the flower opens. So if you manage it properly and relax, break even, pay two swings back. If you can't go two swings back, you have to take your profit here. And there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. You know, if you take your profit here and it ends up down here, that's okay. But if you want to play for this, then you have to keep profit stops two swings back. You do need to go to break even once we're down here. But then you have to be slow to move your stops or you will get stopped. It's hard to relax, absolutely. So the flower open, I ended up with 177 pips. Your homework is to go back and recreate this. Put yourself in this position. See how you feel, for example, at this point. Either trade was great. Take your profit here or let it blossom, take it at the downside. What I want you to do is I want you to take a 20-minute Aussie. You, I left all the dates on here and all the prices, and I want you to recreate the upsloping green median line, and I want you to up, recreate these lows, these highs, these highs, these lows. I want you to feel price break through for the first time. Let's go back one more. Here we go. I want you to feel price breakthrough. I want you to find this frequency line, one, two, three, four bars, and then copy it over, and then copy it on top. I want you to feel price tested and find the sellers, and then find it break new lows. You can see it break the lows. And I want you to see it swing back up and be ready to trade. Take it apart, put it back together. This is how you're gonna learn. So rather than have me do it, slide by slide by slide. This last part, which is a very nice trade, I'm going to let you guys do this for yourself. 6A futures will work just fine. Absolutely, Eric. I trade in the CME all, all the time. Just use 6A and use 20 minutes. It's no problem. But it's the same. Eric, it'll look exactly as the price will be off by the adjustment to the futures date, but the, but the bars will look exactly the same. This is Forex, Eric. This is cash foreign exchange, but you could do, yeah, this is spot. But you could also do it on the CME, which is what the CMA symbol is 6A, okay? Oh, this is 20 minutes, RS. You don't have to ask privately. So I wish I got you every day, says uh, Tomas, I would be lax. Well, you know, I've been doing this a long time. It's easier for me to relax. Somebody says, how am I monitoring, managing your chart time to manage these moves? As I'm on, um, if you go back, if you watch last month's seminar, which broker do I use? Um, are you asking me which, I mean, I'm, we're doing questions. Wait, before we get into questions, Cynthia, do you want to do a poll? Maybe not. I'll just answer some questions and when Cynthia's ready, she'll break. Actually, I, I thought I was talking but had not unmuted my phone. Okay. <laughs> um, well, well, here, so, let me say this before. I, don't do the poll yet because I want to I wanna give you a plug, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. So listen, there's going to be a poll. And when Cynthia does the poll, it says not for me. It has nothing to do with me. It's, it's, a, it's Merry Christmas to Cynthia, okay? When you get the poll, make sure that you type in in the center. You'll see this little box. Either type Cynthia or webinar in there because it goes to management and it gives her more power and more budget, okay? And nobody has a better educational system 
than Cynthia. And I'm not talking about just my stuff. And we're going to ask Cynthia afterwards to go to the educational page and show us all the cool things she's got there. That's why that's why I actually do educational things here is because she just – that's what she's here for. She's here to help educate you. not here to sell anything. And I'm not here to sell books or anything else. I'm just here to help. Okay, Cynthia does rock. So, Cynthia, if you want to do a poll, now's the time. Okay, well, thank you very much. And you're right. This is a management uh, requirement for each of these events. So notice, I've just opened up that polling panel on your screen. It's open for a very short time, but I ask that you simply make your selections, and we keep two questions, multiple choice, to try and keep it easy. But there is an input field in number two. Now, don't put your questions for Tim there, because we won't see them until um, or. I won't see those questions until I do review this with management next week. So um, <clears throat> save your questions for the chat panel, but go ahead and complete those questions and any comments or suggestions for other webinars, happy to take those in that input field. But you'll have to finish up quickly. There's about five seconds left, so please click that Submit button now, which allows me to compile all of your responses. Thanks, everyone. Definitely appreciate that. Now, you um, have probably Seen that it's covered up the chat panel. Notice there's a X on the polling panel title bar, and simply closing that panel will remove it from your screen. Also, when you do that, you can locate the chat panel title bar, and if that has collapsed, simply double-click it, open up the chat panel, and you can send your questions to Tim. So back to you, Tim. Thank you. Who, what is Cynthia? Kumar, that was Cynthia. Cynthia runs the world. Cynthia runs everything. If you want quality education, and, and in a few minutes, Cynthia is going to take us to the education page for uh, interactive brokers. Cynthia's job basically is to help educate anybody that's interested. So that's who Cynthia is, and God bless her. I, Cynthia and I have been together for eight years, and uh, we were introduced by a fine woman by the name of Barbara Schmidt Bailey, um, who at the time was the head of uh, education at the Chicago Board of Trade, and Barbara and I have been together for 10 years. I don't know. Pete and I are starting a relationship. So let's see. Uh, let me let me back up. Oh, all right. So which broker do I use for Spot 40 Shades Data? Now, were you asking me for if you want to know for data, in other words, how do I make bars, I use the combined uh, e-signal forex for most of the I have um, – what's called the writer's big pipe, but that's tens of thousands of dollars a month. So I don't recommend that. Um, you don't need that. But e-signal e uh, combined data is, is just fine. Um, everybody will get a recording of the webinar. You'll get a link about two hours afterwards. Cynthia sent out this nice email. Thanks you. Um, let's see. Do you ever take entries off the middle media line or just the edges? No, sometimes I take you – know, I think if you go to the one from last month, we had one in the media line. I, I, I trade both. It just depends on what's going on. These happen to be framed um, on the outer one. In fact, this last one, if you noticed, I did the action reaction. I didn't even take it off the um, outer median line. I did it off the frequency. So it depends on what price is vibrating off of. That's the right way to say it. Yes, but who is she? She is the head of education for interactive brokers. Cynthia is. Will this work on 15-minute bars? It will work on any time frame from 10 ticks, 1 tick, Monthly, weekly, daily, 60 minute, 120 minute, 240 minute, 15 pips. Um, I like to trade, for example, in natural gas, 189 ticks. So work on anything. Uh, let's see. Do I look at any other time frame? Sure. Absolutely. I look at in currencies, I look at 20s and 240s. Those are my favorites. Um, in other things, for example, natural gas and soy meal, I'm a tick trader. I, I like 189 ticks. Gold, I like 888 ticks, or I'll trade dailies. So it just depends on, you know, what I'm doing. If I'm trading for my portfolio, which is for my, my four clients, um, I'm a sovereign wealth manager, for those of you that don't know. And my four clients are four of the, lar they have four of the largest portfolios in the world. And so when I trade for their portfolio, of course, I trade dailies, weeklies, and monthlies because, you know, we're in trades that last for months. So what do you find is good separation on a close? Well, intraday... Five to seven pips. And, and these are the CME, yeah, Pete and uh, Barbara Schmidt-Bailey are the CME people, right? Which, and the CME owns the CBOT, that's right, as well as the, as well as COMEX and several others. 
They're the largest exchange in the world. So let's see. Um, please show the panel set. Pull up slowly. Explain what makes it such. Sure. Ed. So, give me. See if I can find my favorite here. Well, let's just go back to the last one. So, Ed, here's what we're looking for. When we break a low right here, well, I guess we'll have to use this one. Then this, I, I would encourage you to recreate this. When we break these lows right here, now you see we've taken out the upper parallel. When we take out this low right here, what we're looking for is price to swing back up and leave a lower high, which is why we're not trading on this bar here. So we expect price when it left a lower high here and took out the lows. We expect the next high to be lower. So we'll let it test. We're not going to trade it naked. We're going to let it test. And you can see it's got great separation on the close. And then we're going to sell the retest. And that's a pendulum pullback. Okay? How much do I have under management? It's not, it's, it, it, it's meaningless. It's billions and millions and billions, but I don't take, I have four clients. I don't, I'm closed and they're all offshore. So it's a meaningless question. I'm one of the largest traders in the world. Um, let's see. Time for bed. Okay, Sam, take care. Um, where do you go to understand your frequencies? Um, you, you draw, draw, draw. Um, go to medianline.com or marketgeometry.com. Look under free resources or free information. There's about 100 articles. A lot of them are about frequency. You know, you can buy stuff, but rather than buy stuff, why not, why not do some free stuff first? You can go to IB. Cynthia's going to show us a little bit. Go to the educational part. Search my name. There's a whole long string of them. Watch them. You'll see me use frequencies over and over and over. Uh, TJ, is, if price is going to zoom a line, will it do it? when it first touches it. Well, here's the thing, TJ. I came up with test and retest because I hated it when I put my order right at the test and then, of course, price went through by 50 pips and just blew me out. And I found that by letting it test and then come back and then retest, I've gone from low 50s, mid 60s percentage winners to middle 70 percentage winners, so a good 12 percent winning percentage better, although my frequency of trades drops by 20 percent. But that's okay with me. I don't mind trading less because the quality of trades are so much better. I tr do I trade any other currency pairs? I trade everything, Eric. Everything from uh, rubles, pesos, Aussie, Canada, euro, euro, yen. You pick it, I trade it. I trade uh, Mexican debt. I trade anything that moves. I do not trade housing debt, those types of things. I don't, it's not my thing. Does pendulum swing mean price goes from upper median line to lower? Not necessarily, no. It's just this, George. We take out a low, leave a lower high. Now we're pulling back, and we expect a lower high. Okay? What's the theory behind test and retest? I just went through it. Wide separation bar then retest and place limit by order. I just went through it. As a whale yourself, are you following other whales who will also follow suit? No, I don't follow anybody, as not. Um, and, I mean, do people sometimes uh, rec – do other people that have been around me a long time, other whales that have known me for a long time – there are three or four out there that have known me for 30 years or so um, – might they recognize my style? Sure. Might they go along? They might, or they might use – you know, my, my trading is an opportunity to unload their position. Um, Ed wants to know, will I do another presentation at the beginning of the year? Oh, sure, absolutely. We're, we're already set up for, uh, for January. Yep. Um, when has a fork or a group of median lines served their purpose or expired? Um, that's always a tightrope. Um, you know, I had, this was a while ago, I think this was 2005, I mentioned Andy and Dro. We had a prop room at the time at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. There were five of us. It took, you had to have a $5 million account to sit down in the chair. And uh, we also were, t I was teaching, uh, Barbara and the Chicago Mercantile Exchange arranged for me to teach 350 people at a time, four traders that were trying to make the transition from the floor 
to screen trading. And um, so we would have a morning class. We'd broadcast a live morning class to this entire floor. And uh, we had this S&P median line. And we took 27 trades in a row off this median line. We called it the golden line. And so there are times when these median lines go and go and go. There are other times when the third test, it looks tired and you pass on it. If you pass on it, uh, it works. You saw me pass on a few that works. That's okay. There'll be another trade. So it's a stylistic, you know, as far as I'm concerned, stylistic. You know, there are times that you're going to want to do it and times that you're not going to want to do it. Um, the only way you're going to get a feel for it is to practice. Um, let's see. Do I see upsloping median set testing right now in the S&P? I'm not looking at the S&P right now, Tom. Tomas, so um, I'm sorry. Um, and I'm, I'm not a forecaster. Did price make it to the lower red median line? Um, in point of fact, oh, well, there's the question. We'll go there in a minute. Um, in point of fact, I don't believe it did. And hi, Elizabeth, by the way. Did price make it to the – oh, no, wait, uh, from Nicola. Uh, if there are shocking news, we can use median lines? Sure. Sure, sometimes that's the – you know, Shane, my partner, calls it the, the scary drop or, a, you know, big wide range bar higher. A lot of times that's the gift that gets you back up to this area um, and allows you to get short. Just let it come up here, test, sell the retest. So, sure, absolutely. I don't, I don't even watch the news. So if I get filled because of a – because of a news item, great. That's wonderful. Oh, I see. It's always great to see you. I love you guys. And you give everybody a hug to everybody, the Coral Gables group. A uh, Coral Gables group, there's uh, seven of us left. We're the inner circle from Dr. Andrews, um, who passed away in 1987. There's only about seven of us left. So always good to see you. Give everybody a hug for me. Uh, let's see. Because your target moves with the slope of the line, there you go, over time, you need to babysit the position overnight in case it's realigned overnight. Well, Stephen, I actually, if you watched last month's um, seminar, I started to talk about this. Um, I brought back my original broker from 1980 because I managed so much money. And uh, we're calling them the Graybeards. That's actually now going to be their company name. And what we did was we, I gave the, gave the business to him. He brought back eight of my brokers from the past that I like. They all have an, at least 15 years' experience with me. They have a nice two-flat apartment across from the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, and they can actually see my chart on this big monitor right in front of their desk where they do all their execution. They can draw on the chart to talk. To, they can pick up – we have a direct line. They can pick up the phone, but they can also draw on the chart. So in the middle of the night, they're seeing the chart that I've drawn – uh, we talk before I go to bed. We put in orders. I'll draw and say this is my intention. And But I give them discretion. You know, they're allowed to, you know, Michael is the name of the head broker. They're allowed to wake Michael up and say, hey, you know, I think we have problems here, buddy. Or do we let this run to here? Um, because one thing they do know is do not wake Tim up, period. So, you know, I have an unusual situation, and they clear through IB now. I have an un unusual situation, which is, you know, they know my techniques. They've been with me for a long time. They've taken all my seminars, um, and they have discretion. And they don't work for anybody but me. I'm their only client. Uh, last time you did Aussie 60 Minute, right. Was that unusual? No. No, no, no. Um, 120 is unusual. My partner does 120s and 45s. I don't do those. Uh, 20 minutes, 60 minutes. It depends on how things are swinging. Um, 60 Minute used to be the gold standard, but... Now it's become 20-minute and 240s. 240s is half of a U.S. day. The second half is the U.S. night. Then it's half of Japanese morning, then the Japanese night, then European morning, then European night. So 240s is, has become the logical uh, default for hedge fund guys, guys with large portfolios. 20 minutes is a frequency that fits in there nice if you're trading a smaller one. Preferred time frame for E-mini S&P is actually like a volume chart, to be honest, um, just because it's very noisy in time. But if I was going to use a time frame, I'd be using uh, 15 minutes or I'd be using day only that stops at 3 p.m. and I'd be using 13 minute bars, which I know sounds crazy, but you can try it. Do I use the same ATR calculation used for the ES to size stop? Yep. Anything. Okay. Anything. Hi, Svetlana. How are you? What's your question? Oh, there you go. 
Um, a question about pendulum pullback. It was counter trend, and that was made in ex expectation of reaching meeting line of new downsloping meeting line, aka pendulum pullback. So it was called pendulum pullback because of its target. Am I right? Well, it was. You know, in a certain sense, you're telling me it's counter trend, but let's look here. At this point, okay, it looks like it's upsloping, right? Everybody, take a look. It looks like it's upsloping. However, we leave a high. We come down and leave our low. I didn't put a blue line here, but you can imagine it. Then when we come up, we leave a lower high. We've got that frequency going for us. We throw that frequency in. We leave a lower high. Then we break this low. It's the first time we've taken out a low. So we're leaving lower highs, and now we're making lower lows. So are we in an uptrend? That's the question. If you still think we're in an uptrend, then you can't get short. But if this is enough confirmation for you, when we take out the low and leave a lower high, then this is the pendulum pullback. Your profit target is not dependent on whether this is a pendulum pullback. This is the pendulum pullback. Profit target or double the range would be your profit target. Or you could go for the median line. You could go for this median line. You could go for the lower parallel. That's fine. Um, my, my pleasure, Steve. I, I appreciate it. Would be interested in doing this on stocks and how you would go about finding stocks. Oh, um, Steve, we trade um, in evening with the master, which is twice a month. We have a whole portfolio that we do. We got along Facebook at 23 and it's you know 51 or whatever right now. Um, we, we trade all kinds of stocks, and they're just beautiful. Um, and how do we find them? Um, see, when I trade fifth graders, they have to trade stocks and they can only trade long. Here's how they find them. They go to various things like uh, stockcharts.com or StockTwits or uh, free stock charts, all those places, and you can see they have activity charts. Charts, they go stocks that are most active or stock twitch that even has one that says stocks that are charted and posted the most. And so they pick up those charts and they look for specific setups. They're allowed to trade only one thing. They don't get to use uh, sloping lines. They have to use horizontal lines. And they're looking for mountains. Like, for example, this would be a mountain. We'll do that another day. But they have a specific setup that they're looking for and allowed to trade and specific risk management. And they page through by looking at the most watched stocks. They have to come up with their own stock. I don't, I don't give them any help. I don't give them any. I, I teach them what to do via recording. And um, then they have to find their trade, submit their trade, let it follow through, do a postmortem. And um, at the end of the year, um, then we do, uh, you know, last year we did top 10, um, and top eight out of the top 10 we taught out of 175,000 kids. This year uh, we have 125,000. I don't even know how big the program is, and hopefully we'll do, uh, we'll do well. But our, our, uh, our group tends to do pretty good, and they're just doing stocks. One has a fork or group of meeting lines to serve their purpose or expire. I've, I've answered that. It's, it, you have to, you'll just have to look. What parent? Currency pairs do trade. Any favorites? Oh, I love Aussie. I love Canada. I don't like Euro very much because it's very noisy. There's so many crosses going on. Um, let's see. I like uh, Canada yen as a cross. Um, Euro yen is fine. Our action reaction line is the same as Andrews Babson reversal indicator. Um, you're using, again, I'm not going to go into somebody else's stuff, but I don't really think much of that and that's as much as I'm going to say what are the main characteristics of a range extension how do we acknowledge the beginning of one the main characteristic of range extension is we go from um, a coil or congestion and then generally we break out and we break out in um, unfortunately they're often difficult to trade because they break out in quick tight patterns that are highly sloped so if you don't get in immediately you never chase price. If you can't find a way in immediately, generally you get left behind the trade. And the thing to do at that point is just say, okay, well, never mind. I'll catch it on the next time around. Because you, if you chase it, you will get into trouble. How do you get enrolled in a fifth grade class? Well, this enrollment's already closed, and they're halfway through the year. Um, they're up uh, startling. For two and a half months of trading, they're up 13.5% already on average for the year. They're having a magnificent year. They're closed now. Uh, they were done at the end of November. And they're they're uh, they're closed. They classes start again about the middle of January, and they go until April, I don't know, right around the middle, right around tax day, right around April fifteenth. And um, then we have to collate all the trades. And um, I generally I have to rule on a couple that you know do or don't fit the. And then we then we'll announce the top. 
Um, so this year it's already over. Um, they're gonna, there's going to be a special announcement this year in June because, as I said, Michael Dell took over the sponsorship after Steve Jobs passed away. And uh, we're going to do a different program next year, which is going to be fourth and fifth graders and ninth and tenth graders. He would, he would like to target uh, high schoolers as well, which is fine with me. So we'll make that, we'll make that announcement, and um, you'll have to do it through your school. But what are the main characteristics of a ranger? I did that one again. Uh, uh, what is my trade size? That's really not important to you. Uh, how do I determine it? I determine it by um, percentage of capital that I'm willing to risk. I never risk more than 1.6% of my capital on any trade, period. Oh, oh, I see. Do me a favor. Would you email me that address, please? Thank you. Um, you need to clear third grade before you go to fifth. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Any favorites for what? I'm sorry, Eric, I missed that one. Um, do you ever use a test to stop to set the stop when entering on the retest rather than a test retest one pivot before? No, because the idea of the stop is that you want to be hiding here. Look at – yeah, I do have my cursor. There will be sellers here at this prior high. So we want our stop up above this prior high because people that missed getting short here and they watch it plunge, they're either going to have their sell orders here or they're going to have their sell orders here. So we want to be up here to be protected by the people that now get it and now want to sell. Okay? How much care capital does it take to change the direction of a currency future or commodity? Well, I will tell you this, and I've, I've changed a few. You can only change it for a, a small period of time. I don't care if you're the Fed, the Bank of England, or Dr. Morge. Okay, you can change for a small period of time, but you're not going to change the trend. The trend is the trend. Okay, um, you might change it in enough that you can execute, for example, or you, you know get out, but uh, you're not going to change the trend. I don't care how many trillions of dollars you are, because you know the, it, that's based on cash flows in countries. Um, in the prior trade, why did you not take partial profits? I don't ever take partial profits, ever. That's why. Hey, Ouija, there's separation bar at the MLA of the red median line, which may indicate price is slowing down. Uh, okay. Everybody take a look. He's talking about a here and take a look at the great separation from price hitting the median line and there's great separation here yep i got that the red mlc pivot over here is a wide range bar that pokes through mla and fails to follow through on that bar very good nice catch is that also a clue that price is running out of energy to the upside i think so because look we're we're barely able to make new highs then we don't follow through. So we're congesting right at prior highs, and then we start to make lower highs and lower lows. Great catch, Ouija. Um, if you're trading billions and billions upon billions and are making billions, why are you charging for classes? More importantly, how do you find time for trading those billions? Mr. B, you should just be happy that I'm willing to share what I know. I'm in the give back period of my life, okay? My kids are in their late teens. Well, it's not their late teens, 13 and 15 years old. My father told, told me when I was growing up, and I teach my children, everything you give, you get back a thousandfold. Okay? Why do we charge? I, nobody charged you anything to come here, Mr. B, did they? And if you go to any of my websites, there's hundreds of articles. There's all kinds of videos. Believe me, there's all kinds of free stuff. You need to look harder. If you don't want to pay, don't pay. That's fine. We're the, we're the best education out there and the cheapest. Uh, can you say what is five bar test you choose to put on a median line? It's kind of a rule. Yes. Um, after five bars, it gets stale. Then you need another test to retest. Okay. So if we get a test and then we don't retest within five bars, then we're going to have to test again and then retest again afterwards because it gets stale otherwise. It's staying up there too long or it's not coming back fast enough, one or the other. Uh, can you say what is, oh, I did that, sorry. Um, you guys are faster than me. The small frequency on the left connecting the three lower lows, last chart, which mapped out the trade for you, doesn't match my 6A. Okay, there's nothing I can do from your Globex seat. Nothing I can do about that, Michael. But Michael, do this. See if you can find some frequency. Maybe it's not the same frequency as mine. This is cash for an exchange. Maybe it's not the same as mine, but see if you can find some frequency and see if you can flip it over. 
Mr. B, we're done talking, okay? You know what? You don't even use your real name. On slide 40, okay. Yep. If you're trading off the magenta set, why do you use the upper parallel and not the median line? I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, I'm using the magenta set. I am using the upper parallel of the magenta. I'm actually not using the green in any sense. I'm using the magenta, which was refreshed. Uh, Mr. B, if I had a kick you button, I'd use it. But at this point, I think everybody knows what you are. From Peter. Are action and reaction lines the same as Andrews, Babs, reversal? Now, I've already, I've already answered that question, Peter. Um, you know, you're getting material from somebody that doesn't know anything about Andrews' work. Um, go educate yourself at my website. It's free. Just plain free. How about a presentation on what you are watching for possible longer-term moves in 2014? Um, it's always a possibility. Uh, we'll see what – I know uh, Cynthia and Barbara have an agenda for 2014. And um, I will be more than glad to follow through with whatever they want to do. I never look at volume. The reason I don't look at volume, TJ, is because traders like me, and I've, I've said this before, traders like me don't have – we can choose whether or not we report our trades. I don't know if you guys know that. We have uh, exemptions. So we can decide, you know, I don't want this trade reported. All the volume is not reported. I know you guys think it is, but it isn't. So when you look at, for example, commitment of traders or end-of-day volume, it's not a complete picture. So to me, at this point, it's – and I know how to manipulate volume. There's, there's no point. I don't trust it. Um, let's see. Yeah, sure. Uh, Gerhard says, could you please tell us how to use average to range? Look, very simple. This is a simple moving average of a 34-period average to range. We use two. We use a shorter one and a longer one. Okay, and the reason why is because here, where it's very, very volatile, the shorter-term one might go up. So we want it to reflect the heavy volatility. Um, where here, the longer one will reflect that we've just been stuck in a range for a long time. We're always going to use the larger of the two and – on an intraday trade basis like this, we can be relatively close to the APR, but always bigger. When we trade uh, stocks, for example, on a daily basis, we generally use double the average to range. Jay's got it exactly right. If you want to know about anything about action and reaction lines, you don't have to use those fancy words. You don't have to use that crap that the gentleman is selling for three or $5,000. It's very simple. 1500 BC, the Emerald Tablet, which is Sir Isaac Newton's favorite book, as above, so below. That's where Newton built his three laws of motion, period. Do I ever use range bars? Um, Michael, I used to, but they, they hide. I, you know, I, I use them for quite a while in currencies, but I find that they hide a lot of market structure. And market structure is really important. So I prefer to use tick bars. And, and the other thing, I use tick bars and bonds as well. Um, occasionally, I use volume-based bars in the E-mini S&Ps. I know I said I don't like volume. It's not so much that as much as it just smooths out the action. But I don't really care. Like people go, is the volume increasing? That's meaningless to me. I'm using the 55-200 ATR. That's fine. No problem. I found I get stopped out just as price turns. Could that go into more deal on how to use ATR for stops, please? Yes, Isaac, you need to be um, – so, for example, let's say the ATR. You need to figure out – you need to go back and look at, like, 30 swings in the, in the currency period you're using or S&Ps, whatever you're trading then you need to look at the ATR and actually put the ATR over top every, every swing and underneath every swing, okay? And then you need to figure out how far do I have to be from that swing past the ATR to survive that move 80% of the time. You can do it by hand. I've done it plenty of times. And that's the correct way to do it. Is frequency line the same as a trend line? Um, yeah, sure. I'll say that. How do I enroll in fifth grade? No, it's too late, too late Ted. Not, not this year, next year. How can a school apply for your classes? Um, let's see. You know what? 
Cynthia, I'll be back in the beginning of January. I'll try and get the name of the school program out either January or February so that when before the end of the school year, people can ask their schools to get – it's something like Bright Star, but it's, a, it's for accelerated students only. And um, – I'll bring the name of it. You have to go through them. Your school has to go through them. I can't see if you think about it. This only makes sense. If you had a fifth, a fifth grade child, would you like them chatting with me? I mean, I wouldn't like that. I, I, I mean, I started with my son who was in fifth grade, so I have no contact with them whatsoever, in the sense that when when they pass me charts, it comes through a teacher. It comes anonymously. It's got a number on it. I have no idea who's teaching them, whether they're from my group or not, and then I make a determination. So. Same thing with signing up. I can't help you sign up. You'll have to go through the group, and I'll, I'll bring it to the next time. Can we ask Cynthia to do a session on stock soon? Well, I, I well, think you just did. <laughs> I've seen that in the background, and I did unmute because I did want to uh, mention one thing, Tim. Mm -hmm. Your date in January, we already have the date set, See, so it's coming up on January 9th. So I'll pester you a little bit as we get closer no for the information on the school program. Now, also, do want to mention, too, I've seen a, a few folks are asking about uh, taking a look at stocks, and I do have one requirement through YB, is that any of the education webinars that we run has to be sponsored by an exchange, and that's right. why we love the CME, because their dedication to educating traders brings you all of these sessions. And um, actually, Tim, can I take a break, give you a chance to grab a sip of water? Yep. Uh, and what I'm going to do, I'd like to show This everyone. is my favorite part. Oh, <laughs> Of course, we've got so much of your work here, and I do want to show folks how they can access it as well. So I'm going to grab the ball away from you and share my desktop. Now, um, you'll see your screen blank momentarily, and then notice I've left you on the IB website. But from the interact Interactive Brokers website, notice the education menu. There's a webinars link. Now, here's when you, where you can get into the webinar section. Upcoming webinars appear um, <clears throat> with registration links, and you can also go into the recorded sessions. Now, I'm going to go into the recordings here and show you that all of the events that Tim does for us are on the industry-sponsored tab. Now, um, I'm simply going to scroll through, and you'll see we've got quite a bit, and this is only going back to the first, uh, first half of the year. So rather than scroll through for everything, we actually put um, some filters here. So notice you can actually locate Tim um, by speaker name, and I'm going to scroll down here. They're alphabetical. We'll open up Tim, and notice here that it gives you access to all of the educational events that he's been doing. Uh, and we actually do date back. I think, to 2007 here. Yep. Now, notice each of these um, not only include the hyperlink to the session, which here's last month, but notice that we also include the, um, the slides that Tim provides. So not only can you go back and review the uh, information, you even get a copy of those slides that, so that you can do the homework that Tim mentions uh, on occasion. So make sure that you do check this information out. By the way, they're available 24-7, so whenever it's convenient for you, you've got a few, um, you've got some time, uh, then please check out these webinars. Now, I'm going to run back um, as well because um, we don't have the event scheduled. Once it is scheduled, you'll see it under our live webinars tab. But I also want to mention, if on the second Thursday of every month you find yourself with some time at uh, noon East Coast time, um, you'll find that our upcoming webinars are also listed in this section. Now, you can join by simply clicking on this link. All you need to know is the password. And for all of Tim's events, it is IB Trading, same password that you use to enter today's event. So I um, want to show you where you can access not only today's event. By the way, we're recording today's session, so you'll all get a direct link to today's recorded playback. And and remember, uh, if you want a copy of these slides, you can go to our website later on today. But um, by simply exiting our session, you'll see a new 
uh, browser window will open up and has a PDF copy of Tim's slides. So be on the lookout for that. Now, several people will miss that if you happen to have your browser minimized on the on your taskbar at the bottom of your screen. So do be on the lookout for it. But if you miss it, simply access our website. We're constantly adding more information out there. So a quick way where you can find us, find more information about Tim's events, his recorded sessions, and even join us um, on the second Thursday of each month. And Tim has graciously agreed to do that for 2014. So we're looking for a lot more information from you, Tim. Let's take it back over into the main event window where if there's any additional questions, we'll go ahead and um, uh, answer them for right now. Thanks, Tim. I guess, sorry, I guess I muted myself. Sorry about that. Um, I love that page. You know, the page, Cynthia, whoever's doing the, uh, the coding, it's getting nicer and nicer and easier and easier. It's very nice. Ah, well, thank you. We try. Uh, we try. <laughs> you know, give them, no, actually give them my props. It, it, you know, even from last month, it's better. It gets better and better. So, very nice. And there's, there, guys, there's, guys and girls, there's lots of educational, good educational stuff there. It's not just me, okay? I, I, obviously, I love it. You guys watch me, but there's lots of stuff from lots of people. And a lot of my friends uh, give education as well. So, Mr. B, you know, maybe you don't like me. Go find somebody else. That's fine. Um, let's see. So a principal of a school should call you. No, no, you can't call me. The pr a principal of a school would get a hold of this group, and we'll put it out in January, either the January event, which is the 9th of January. It's always the second Thursday of a month. Um, I'll get the information, and uh, they will have to get a hold of it. Um, the Kelly, Kelly criterion for determining trade size is fine, although I use, if you want the truth, I use fixed fractional, but that's fine. Uh, would you come back to Denver Trading Group as a speaker? Um, they'd have to ask me. How about that? Uh, George Soros says he broke the pound. How about that? I actually was executing the orders. So uh, so I don't take a Zoom if it doesn't retest. That's correct. Because there wouldn't be a stop, right? Um, JB, uh, is it GB? I'm very grateful that you came to listen, and I hope you learned something that's it's, it's my pleasure. And, uh, yeah, for all, yeah, Eric, Merry Christmas and happy holidays to you. And you know what? I, I, again, I'm in my legacy period. I, I'm, I'm proud to be able to give back. This industry has given me um, so much. It's, it, it's well over 40 years, so much in over 40 years. Um, you know, it's just what I was taught. I think it's the right thing to do. Um, so many people uh, take and take and take. If I can help a few people, I think it's just great. So many people helped me. Amos Hostetter, one of the, I think, the greatest traders in the last 300 years. Dr. Andrews, uh, one of the best technicians ever. Um, there are other people that don't, don't wish to be named. I don't know if they don't want to be associated with me. but and, and quite a few that have passed away because I started at a very early age. But I, there are a lot of people that were willing to help me, so I'm certainly willing to pass it on to you guys. Um, do I participate in stock IPOs? E, um, yes, as a matter of fact. Um, I had the opportunity to be one of the original buyers, uh, you know, the pre, the pre IPO, uh, investors in Twitter and past because I, well, I'm just not going to go into it, but, um, um, there are quite a few that I participate in that my, that I should say that my fund participates in. Um, let's see. Sorry to clarify my question on slide 40. Why do you have the target at the upper parallel? Oh, okay. Are we at 40? Yeah. Okay. Here. Why do we have the target at the upper parallel of the magenta line instead of the median line? Why here instead of here? If I had my target here, I wouldn't have a three-to-one risk reward. It'd be too small of a trade versus the size of the stop. I need it to be at least three times the size of the stop or I won't take the trade. Okay? How many whales would I estimate use median lines? Um, in any general time frame, there's three to five of us, and I would say probably me. <laughs> there may be one other. They all know them, but 5 a.m. in Australia. Merry Christmas to you, buddy. I appreciate coming, Tony. Um, you like using candlesticks? I used to use them, but, you know, when I present, it's a lot easier to present with black and white, so I just – I always use black and white now. Just, uh, if they help you see – 
price action, then by all means use candlesticks. Would it be okay to email you? Oh, yeah, sure, Steve. Steve wants to know if he can email me. Watch. This time we did this, Cynthia. Email. TimothyMorge at gmail.com. Those are the two websites. Look for free stuff. There's also an email link there, but here is the email. You can email about everything, Shep. I'm, I am swamped, but, you know, that's all right. Um, well, you know, in terms of he's asking if we can find a sponsor exchange, you know, I know a few people. We'll, we'll see if we can find somebody to, uh, uh, to sponsor a stock thing. We'll, don't worry about it. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Norma, I'm sorry. I hope your dog feels better. But, um, yeah, the recording is wonderful. You'll get exactly what you want. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Please don't pick on my fifth-grade friends. Okay. I promise not to. Uh, the Kelly criterion, it's just a, it's a way of, of determining your, your position size, and uh, it's, it's non – you're getting into math that you probably don't want to get into. It's nonlinear versus simple math. How do you decide whether to let the trade run through the median line and to the upper median line target or take profits at the median line? Um, let's move back one. Can you see all this congestion at this point, David? That gives you a feeling that price has a lot of energy, and when it finally moves, it's going to expend that energy. And you can see here's the first expenditure, and then it goes Jim, sideways grab, again, and then it expends some more. Would you grab the um, laser pointer? Oh. Thank you. That was my you fault. I grabbed the ball from you. That's right. Let me do it again, David. Can you see all this all of this congestion here? So you know the price is full of energy. It's like a gas tank in a car being full of gas. Then it expends some energy, then it goes back into a coil, and then it begins to expend more. So it's again, if you took profit here, there's nothing wrong with that. Don't don't get me wrong. But if you take a look at coiling, at market structure, um, and how much energy price they have because it's been in coils, um, you, you can often get a sense that price is going to do more than the median line. But if you just take out the median line on this trade, you know, it would have been, uh, I don't know, six to one or so. There's nothing wrong with that. Do you ever use a median line set from a higher time frame? Nope. No, 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 no. Always just trade the trade and chart one time frame only. Never go up in a time frame because the volatility is different. You're going to try and decide whether the 60-minute overrules the 20-minute. You're just going to get confused. Stick with one time frame. Stay with it. You'll be much better off. Trust me. Hey, Jorge, how are you doing? Oh, great. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow at the Market Geometry. Um, you know, again, Gerhard, I'm privileged to be here, so thank you. Um, up, up, up. Yeah, thanks to IB and the CME group, absolutely, and happy holidays to them. Thank you, doctor, from a doctor in Charlotte. There you go. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure, Randy. We were in Vegas early in 2000. Um, I will say hi to Howard, absolutely. Um, Anson 10, not so sure, but I'll say Howard, hi to Howard from. He's he's working on me, but I'm not so sure. Um, <laughs> Simon says, I guess Fibonacci extensions is so yesterday. That's what my children would say. You know, one of my closest friends is Joe DiNapoli, and uh, we go back and forth. Um, look, anything, the one thing I'd say nice about all the Fib numbers, first of all, they come from Euclid, and I'm always good with old dead Greeks. And second of all, um, they are a leading indicator versus people that use things like MACD and all the other things that are lagging indicators. So if I had to use an indicator, I'd much rather use – Fib extensions, um, or I would call them Euclid numbers, whatever, you know, then any of the lagging indicators, I have no problem with it. If it works for you, I have no problem with it. How many whales would you estimate use median lines? Uh, there's probably a few. A lot more use know them than use them. Um, and uh, Cynthia, we're running out. Do you have a minimum size or number of bars on a chart, whatever the type? Eric, we like to have about – this is way too many bars on this chart. But I did this because I want you guys to do the homework. You should be looking at something like 100 to 150 bars maximum. Mirror bars are basically, um, let me see, I don't know if I can find a pair on here. Uh, I'm looking. Basically what we're looking for is same size bars, alternate closes. So one closes higher, the other one closes lower. Or one closes lower, the other one closes higher. And they don't tell you anything other than to sit up and pay attention. Something's about to happen. Um, I don't see it. This is 
you know, if we could zoom in, this might be a good example here. But uh, yeah. Mexican standoff, yeah, sure. And and someone always wins, right? Well, God bless you, David. You take care and have a good holiday. Cynthia, I think we're, I well, think we're I running think out that- here, going shows that we're about to conclude today's event. And, Tim, once again, I have to thank you. It's always such a treat to have you. We all learn something each time. And even the homework is very interesting. Um, And for those of you who haven't seen it yet, by simply doing the homework, you'll get that aha moment. So please take a few minutes and do as Tim suggested. Now, again, I want to remind you that we are coming up um, with our next event in 2014. We'll kick that off on January 9th. So please check our um, uh, scheduling and uh, join us as we get up to, towards that date. Now, I do want to thank everyone uh, who's joined us here this afternoon and throughout the year. What a great way to wrap up 2013. Now, I want to wish everyone um, a healthy, merry, and bright holiday season and also wish you all a safe happy new year please join us back again on uh, january 9th and be on the lookout um, later on today for a direct link to today's recorded playback now one thing that i did enter into the chat panel early on in today's session and i'm going to put that back once again and that's a direct link to the cme group um, from interactive brokers there's a special page on um, ib futures that i'd like you to uh, find with daily commentary current charts um, as well as a lot of helpful information it's at interactivebrokers.com forward slash cme um, check that screen out. So um, I want to thank our colleagues over at the CME once again for making today's event possible. Tim, this is always a treat. Thank you so much have, um, for a terrific 2013 and wish you all the best uh, in the uh, new year. So thanks, everyone. By the way, you can all exit today's presentation using the X in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. And remember to look out for a a PDF copy of Tim's slides. I hope to see you in 2014, especially on January 9th. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day, and do trade smart. Thank you. And thank Thank you, you, Tim. Hey, thank you, Cynthia. It was a great year, and I look forward to 2014, and I hope you have a wonderful holiday, darling. Take some time off. You deserve it. Everybody else, have a wonderful holiday, and we will see you in 2014. Thank you, CME Group. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Pete. I appreciate it. All the best. Something makes me happier. All the best. All the best, Tim, and to all of our participants today. Thanks, everyone. Have a great one. Take care.